Hi, welcome to Security Analysis Tool set up on Azure Databricks to monitor the security health of your Databricks workspaces. My name is Arun Pamalapati. I am project lead and co-creator of Security Analysis Tool. Today, we'll be walking through how to set up the Security Analysis Tool on Azure Databricks. Here is the quick agenda. We are going to go through what Security Analysis Tool is, how to set up SAT on Azure Databricks, and a walkthrough of reports and alerts that are generated by SAT. And then we'll be going through a deep dive into SAT configurations, how you can update and modify um, some of those configurations so that you can reflect best of your environment. And then we'll go through a few frequently asked questions, and then we'll uh, end with the uh, call to action. If you are here and interested in SAT, it's likely that you have seen this slide many times. Databricks provides a unified lakehouse platform for all of your BI, ML, and AI use cases. It is simple, it's multi-cloud, and it's open. Since you use Databricks lakehouse platform to analyze your most sensitive data, your data security is our priority. And you can take a look at the list of security um, capabilities that we provide and um, also a security best practices section where we list the best practices by cloud, whether you deploy Databricks on AWS or Azure or um, GCP, we have a document for you. So let's take a look at Azure documentation um, for security best practices for Azure Databricks. So here you will see um, the full list of security best practices and uh, also a checklist our mission to helping data teams solve the world's toughest problems safely didn't stop with security best practices documentation. We went ahead and built a tool called Security Analysis Tool, which makes monitoring the security health of Databricks account workspaces easy. It compares the workspace configurations against the best practices and it automatically flags deviations and helps the customers receive alerts for the workspace over a period of time. It easily identifies and provides the direct links to our documentation for each one of those best practices so that you can mitigate any of those deviations. SIT is available for Databricks on AWS, Azure, and GCP, and you can use Terraform to deploy SAT. In the previous segment, we discussed what SAT is. Now let's see how to set up SAT on Azure Databricks. SAT is available as a Git repository for you to use in your Databricks workspaces. You can set up SAT by using this manual step-by-step -step guide, or you can use Terraform. With Terraform, based on the cloud that you deploy Databricks on, those respect to Terraform scripts are provided, and they're all self-explanatory and easy to use. To set up SAT manually, we provided clear steps with screenshots and where necessary, the steps for respective clouds are called out. If you are setting up SAT in Azure, you would be using those cloud specific instructions. And other times you will be following the general instructions. Let's start setting up SAT on Azure Databricks environment. I have my Azure Databricks workspace here. You will be setting up SAT once per one Azure subscription. So if you have 10 workspaces under your Azure Databricks subscription, you will be setting up SAT once under the subscription to monitor all of those workspaces from single workspace. You do not need to set up SAT for each one of those workspaces. You can, and then monitor only that workspace if that is a requirement for you, but you don't have to. Some organizations may have a requirement that um, those workspaces are logically separated and each department or a group may be monitoring or administering those workspaces. In that scenario, you may deploy SAT 
under those subset of workspaces once for that sub subset of workspaces and then monitor those subset of workspaces if you choose to do so. In my example, I'm going to deploy SAT in this workspace and I'm going to monitor four of my workspaces under the subscription. We'll be using the instructions and the prerequisites that are provided first. To get started, we will be needing to have the Darbix account ID. So I'll be um, go logging into my Azure account. Some of these prerequisites may be provided by different um, members of your team. So depending upon which information that you're seeking, go through the prerequisites and then have the respective team members or organizations provide you with this information. So I grabbed my account ID. Um, this may be provided by your uh, Azure Databricks account admin in your organization. Second, I need a single user cluster. So I'll go ahead and create that cluster in my uh, Databricks workspace. And it is instructed that I use 11.3 or higher. And I don't need more than two worker nodes. And I can limit this to four if I, I don't need eight uh, max worker nodes there. And I'm going to reduce my time work period to 60. And then I'm going to create this cluster. I need um, a Databricks warehouse ID. So I'll go ahead to my Databricks SQL, SQL warehouses, and grab my SQL warehouse ID, and then put it in a, a text pad. Now I need to import this SAT from um, Git into my Git repos. If Git repos are enabled in your workspace, you should be able to do this. If not, um, you need to go to your workspace settings. This may be something you can request your workspace admin to do. And then you need to have these enabled. With that, I should be able to import any repos. So I'm going to go ahead and add repo and make sure there are no additional spaces and create my repo. So now I have the SAT tool imported into my workspace. I need to make sure I have access to PyPy using the instructions that are provided here so that I can access a library that is provided with SAT. So I'll be going to notebooks, includes and SDK. I'll be connecting to the cluster that I created earlier, and I'll be running all. There are no errors. This confirms that I have access to PyPy. There are instructions that are provided for offline installation of libraries in case there is no access to PyPy. Next, let's create secret scopes. To create secret scopes to safely store your configuration values, you will need Databricks CLI. Setting up Databricks CLI is out of scope for um, this instructional video, but we provided a um, documentation link. So you should be able to go ahead and install that. You will be installing this on either your work laptop or on a virtual workstation that can reach your Databricks workspace. In my case, my laptop can reach my Databricks workspace through our company VPN. So I'm using my laptop to set up my Databricks CLI. Since I already have my CLI, I'm going to go ahead and configure my Databricks CLI to work with this specific workspace. And I'm going to use this E2-SAT as my profile name. So I'll be using this instruction to tell my laptop to work with a specific profile which is going to communicate with 
my workspace. So I'll be giving in my workspace URL. I'll be providing my personal access token. So I'll be going to um, access tokens and generate a token. Since I already have a token that, is, that was generated, I'm going to use that. And I'll test my configuration by running a test command um, using this workspace list command. And I'm successfully connected to from my Databricks CLI to my Databricks workspace. Now that I have ability to interact with my Databricks workspace from my Databricks CLI, I'll go ahead and create a scope within the Databricks secret store. So I'm referring to the Databricks workspace with my same profile that I use to set it up. And I'm creating a scope with SAT underscore scope. This scope will be used to store the sensitive configuration information and use those configurations inside of SAT tool. The scope is successfully created. Now let's go ahead and create the authentication information that is needed for SAT tool to interact with Azure portal as well as Azure Databricks workspaces. This is done via service principle and the instructions that are required to create such service principle are provided here and a specific section is called out here. Please provide this to your Azure administrator and ask for a service principle with this specific characteristics. One of the most important thing that you need to call out is this service principle need to be created with a reader role into subscription level via access control I am using role assignments under your subscription as provided in this section. I have a specific service principle that was already created. I'll quickly show this, but creating the service principle is outside the scope of this instructional video. I'll go ahead to show you how the service principle looks like. so that you can ask for similar service principle with similar access permissions. And this is what we called out in the documentation. So once such service principle is provided, your Azure admin should be able to provide you this information. What you're specifically looking for is the tenant ID, the client ID, and client secret, and your Azure subscription ID. And you need to note these down, which will be used in the next section. Now that we have all the necessary information, let's go ahead and complete the configuration by setting up the configuration information inside of Databricks Secret so that SAT can use this configuration to communicate with your Azure portal as well as Databricks workspaces so that it can complete the analysis. So these three values were gathered earlier in this section. The account ID was gathered here, which we copied, and the warehouse ID was gathered here, which we copied, and the PAT token was copied earlier. Let's go ahead and set those three values. And the workspace ID for this specific key that was mentioned here is the workspace ID that we have in this organization value. So I'm going to put together that key and then I'm going to set this up. And the value that goes into this is the pad token that we copied earlier. I'll be pressing I as I'm in, on Mac, and then I'll be pasting the pad token 
but as this is a sensitive information, I'm going to do it in another screen. Now that step is complete. I'll be setting the, the account ID and I'll be pasting that value. That's complete. I'll be pasting my warehouse ID. All right. In our case, we didn't change the key names and we are using the same scope. So this should be mapped right. So there is no need to change anything here. And because we are using the configuration um, as inside of secrets, we will not be copying the actual values. So we're going to skip this step. And then we are going to set up now Azure specific configurations. And for that, the instructions are provided here. And the information that is necessary for this was provided in this step by your Azure administrator. Once you have that information, you should be able to run these four commands. So I'll go ahead and run these and come back. And let's go ahead and verify that in the Databricks notebook, these configurations are accessed with the same scope. Since we didn't change the scope name, we are good to go and we don't need to make any changes. And we are not going to use directly copying those sensitive information into the notebook directly. We are using the secret configuration method. And at this point, we need to go ahead and add the service principle to each of the workspaces from Azure Admin Console so that the security analysis tool can reach that specific workspace. And access the configuration. So we'll be going to Azure Admin Console. And then we'll be looking for workspaces. And then under permissions, we are going to add that service principle. In my case, this was already added. So I'll be skipping this step, but you need to make sure the service principle is added. And you will need to repeat the same process for all the workspaces so that you can have those workspaces analyzed by SAT. In my case, I did the same thing for that service principle. And there are multiple other workspaces that I have ready to go. So if you want any workspace that you would not like SAT to be analyzing, you will skip configuring that service principle on that workspace. That concludes our configuration steps. If you prefer to have a checklist, we also provided a deployment checklist sheet, which helps you keep track of the steps that you saw so far, and also gives you the necessary commands so that you can directly copy paste from here. So now that the configuration is in place, we can go ahead and initialize the SAT tool. So we have two paths. Let's go ahead and take the setup option one, a simple method where we wrap everything into a single notebook, which will initiate the overall setup. Now let's go ahead and initialize SAT. And make sure your cluster is running. You can pick the cluster by using this pull down. This is the same cluster that we created earlier and run all. 
After about 10 minutes, the security analysis initializer completed processing and configuring the workspaces so that it is ready for analysis. So let's look at the sub jobs that are executed by this notebook. The first one is it lists the account workspaces. So what it does is it actually uses the service principle that was provided as part of the configuration and contacts the um, Azure APIs and gets all the workspace information and configures the workspaces under uh, the configuration called workspace underscore configs.csv. And then it runs a test connection to those workspaces. Then it enables those workspaces where it was successfully able to connect using that service principle and ignores all the other workspaces uh, from analysis. It also imports the dashboard template. It configures the alerts for generating any type of deviations when a specific best practice is configured for alerts. We'll quickly go through each one of those notebook runs and make sure there are no errors. We are now ready to run the analysis itself. We'll come back to these update configuration files once we complete the analysis. So let's go ahead and run the analysis driver attached to the same cluster and run. While the analysis is running, let's go ahead and look at the dashboards template. That was created by um, the initializer. And also the alerts that were created by the initializer for each of those workspaces. After spending about eight minutes um, the security analysis driver completed analyzing five of those workspaces that were attached to SAT, and it had written all the checks it did into a Delta table. Now we can go ahead and look at the dashboard to verify the report. The dashboard uses a SQL warehouse and as soon as the warehouse is online, it will be able to run the report. Once the SQL warehouse is online, you will be able to see the SAT report for a configured workspace. Now that we have basic setup of SAT, let's go ahead and fine tune your SAT. There are a couple of tools that we provide within SAT that can help you with that. The first one is, what if, if you want to modify security best practices that we provide um, so that it caters to your needs? For example, you may want to a, disable a check because the check doesn't apply to your organization, or you may want to modify an evaluation value that we use as a default for a specific check. For example, the threshold for number of admins, and also you may want to configure an alert uh, for a given check so that when a deviation happens on that check, you would receive an automated email whenever the SAT analysis is run. Let's go ahead and demonstrate how to take advantage of this tool. For this, I'll go back into SAT repo and then notebooks and set up and then update SAT check configuration. I will attach this notebook to the same cluster that I was using for running SAT analysis. And then I'll follow the instructions that were mentioned here. First, I would run this utility. And then I will run get all SAT checks that will populate a widget at the top. Now, I will change default behavior of notebooks when widgets are selected so that we have better control. And then for a given SAT check, I would get the configuration and then modify that. For example, I'll pick informational admin count check, and then I'll get the check configuration, and then 
I would like to keep the check enabled. If I want to disable this check, I would be changing it to zero. And then I'll change the evaluation value to say, I would like to be alerted if SAT sees more than three admins in a given workspace. And I would like to get an alert as an email in, in addition to showing this as a deviation in SAT report. And then I'll go ahead and save that configuration. Now SAT takes this new behavior for this specific check. Now you can go ahead and do the same for any of the other SAT best practices for your organizational needs. We expect this to be an exception than normal to change these values, but we would like you to have this configuration available uh, as per your needs. Similarly, you can also use another utility that is provided to modify your workspace configuration. What this utility provides is for each one of these workspaces that were originally configured by SAT initialization process, you can go ahead and uh, either disable a given workspace analysis, or you can also modify certain values that we do not have an API for. For example, um, there are uh, there are no APIs to figure out if you have skim enabled for a given workspace. So let's go ahead and use this tool to modify a given uh, workspace. For that, I'll go and pull my um, notebook utility and I'll follow the instructions here. So again, I'll go ahead and run to get that utility for this notebook, and then I'll run get all workspaces so that now, again, I'll change the default behavior of notebooks with widgets so that uh, I have better control on this notebook. And then I'll pick the workspace that I would like to modify. So for example, for SAT dev, I would like to modify certain configuration. So I will get the configuration uh, for that workspace. Now I have the flexibility to change these default values that were originally uh, configured. As I mentioned, out of 60 security best practices checks that we do, there are a few that we do not have an API for. So we'll leave it up to you to um, set the value of whether these configurations were done in a given workspace. So if you want to disable analyzing your workspace, you can go and set it to false. I would like to continue to analyze this workspace with SAT, so I will keep this to true. Uh, SSSO is enabled for this uh, workspace uh, by default as part of it being on Azure. I do have scheme enabled. I do not have any VPC peering done in hub, hub and spoke model. ADLS buckets are encrypted. Table access clusters are used. And I do not want to apply this setting to all workspaces. If, you, if I want to apply these same settings to rest of the workspaces, I can check the respective items here, and then it will apply one or all of those as per your checks. It will configure uh, rest of those workspaces with the same value. Now I go ahead and save this configuration for this workspace, and it will reflect in my SAT dashboard for this workspace if I run that SAT analysis next time. With all of this fine tuning in place, let's go ahead and rerun SAT analysis by using the analysis driver. Now, the changes that we made to SAT best practices, as well as modifications to our workspace configurations would take effect. And SAT driver will take a fresh look at all the workspaces that are under its configuration and then generate a fresh report for you. Let's walk through the SAT reports and alerts. For that, I'll go to SQL side of the Databricks 
what space and go to dashboards and pick up the SAT security analysis tool dashboard, and then pick the workspace that I would like to get the report on. For a given workspace, SAT provides you with a comprehensive report. At the top, you will see a summary by category where for each category, number of checks SAT performed on a given workspace, and out of those checks, how many were high deviations and how many are medium deviations and how many are low deviations. And it does that for each of those categories in the summary. And it gives you the date and time at which this specific analysis was performed. And then it shows you the workspace that you are looking at right now. And then the tier it, at which this workspace was configured. In this case, it is premium. And where this workspace is actually uh, deployed by you. And then at each one of these pillars, it provides you subsections. So it goes by network security, identity and access, data protection, governance, and informational checks. Let's take one of these sections. Under network security, you see one high level deviation, two medium deviations, and there are no low level deviations. Within that, you'll see a best practice check and how this best practice check is configured. And this is configured as high. And then what is the status in this given workspace? Is this configured as per the best practice or was there a deviation? And the date at which this check was performed and the recommendation for this specific best practice. So in this case, configuring private network connectivity is a recommendation. And you can also go to the documentation directly for the specific configuration. So SAT provides you with the best practices and what we think as the severity for that best practice and what it actually found in the workspace where it analyzed. A X mark means there is a deviation. This was not configured as per the best practices. And Check mark means it was configured as per the best practices and a recommendation and how you can remediate by going to the documentation. So this provides you a curated set of links for each of these best practices, so that you don't need to hunt down in our documentation. And same goes for the rest of the other. Now, if you want to further understand about a specific check in detail, there's an additional detail section and you can pick up the specific best practice, and then look at further details on the specific best practice. For example, I would like to see why I have received X mark for admin count in this specific analysis. I'll go ahead and put the check ID and I apply, and SAT provides me with the details. So in this specific workspace, there are six admins, Whereas I wanted to know, and I wanted to limit number of admins by three in my organization. So SAT is not only giving me that this specific best practice was deviated from my policy, but also it's giving me why and who are the current admins so that I can take a deeper look at and reconsider if all these people need to be admins in my uh, workspace. And it gives me the logic that we used to figure out if this is a deviation and a specific API we call to find who the admins are. And further down, you will see trends in a given workspace for best practices over a period of time. So you can track these trends and as you make progress on any of these deviations, for example, now that you realize there are more admins than what you would prefer, you would change some of these admin permissions for some of these folks and rerun security analysis driver once you kind of improve on some of these other deviations. And then you will see this trend line going down. Your goal is to continuously improve the configurations at each one of these workspace as well as at your account level. And 
reduce number of deviations as minimal as it can be. Now let's take a look at alert side of the SAT. As part of SAT initialization process, SAT configured alerts for each one of the workspaces with the logic behind. All you have to do is make sure for any checks where you have configured alerts value as one, and if there is a deviation for those specific checks, who should be receiving an email for a given workspace. By default, it sets the email address to be the person who created with that PAT token that you provided as part of the SAT configuration, but you can always change this to a different destination to a different person by using our alerts configuration. And once you configure that, you may, you may want to go ahead and then refresh the alert. And if the alert triggers, there would be an email that is delivered. From here on, whenever this specific logic meets, a new alert will be generated and which will trigger a destination notification and you would be receiving an email. In my case, I received an alert. So with this information, I'll take some mitigation activities on this workspace uh, based on my company policies. All right, so far we have seen what SAT is and how to set up SAT on Azure Databricks. We took a deep dive into how to fine tune SAT configurations to meet your company policies. And we also looked at walkthrough of SAT generated report and how to use alerts. Now let's go through few frequently asked questions and then conclude with a call to action. We captured few frequent asked questions as part of SAT documentation. The first one is if there is no access to Git because of organizational restrictions, how can I get SAT into my environment? Right. So as part of each of our SAT release, we provide that release as uh, a zip file. You can get a zip file of that SAT code and then follow along these steps so that you will be able to have that SAT repo as part of your workspace and then follow the rest of the steps as usual. The next question is, can SAT make modifications to my workspaces and account? No. SAT is a read-only analysis tool. It does not make changes to your workspace or account configuration. Not only that, any output of SAT is written back into your data table, into your data warehouse. Next frequently asked question is, can I set up SAT driver as a job? Of course, for sure, because it is a notebook, and it independently runs on its own, you can configure Databricks workflow and then using the same setup process that you would use for any job and then configure this on a schedule and then it will run and then deliver a report at that frequency. There are a few troubleshooting steps we documented based on what we found in various environments. Please review these troubleshooting steps in case if you run into any issue. Thank you for taking the time to follow along with the step-by-step -step setup process for SAT. If you want to learn more about SAT, we have written numerous amount of blogs, which we'll leave as links along with this video. Please read them. Please set up SAT by using the Git repo and the steps provided in the documentation. And Please send us your questions and feedback to sat at databricks.com or open an issue on Git. And thank you.